Greetings family and friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Nyamakurasilla. Um, I don't know whether you've stumbled on my channel before, I hope you have. Um, it's a mixed bag my channel is. Um, I talk about lots of things that I'm interested in. I try and keep it not too heavy, heavy as in you know, lay off the politics, lay off the sort of heavy stuff. I try and sort of avoid that. Because obviously I want it to be a little bit more um, enjoyable for people. Or light-hearted, something like that. Yes, light-hearted. Anyway, so it's the evening and today... <laughs> normally I would go out for a walk. I'd go out and I'd do a walk across the village. So I live in a village. Um, but today, I haven't done that. I haven't gone out for a walk today. I'm thinking to myself, because every single day I don't do my exercises, it worries me. I've got to do something on a daily basis, you know. And obviously, I'm not going to walk today, so I'm thinking perhaps I might do some weightlifting later on. Let's wait and see, see how things carry on. So, yeah, I'm... I'm looking forward to the next few months. I'm hoping to travel in a month's time, um, which would be nice for me. Get to see family and friends, get to experience life outside of um, Sierra Leone, <laughs> which would be fun. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping to do that. I was just thinking actually today, today, it's been a strange old day because normally when I live in England, I'm used to just nipping down the supermarket and hunting for things that I want to eat. Even though I've got a, a house full of food, <laughs> it's actually quite sad. Even though I've got a house full of food, I would always go to supermarket in the evening. In fact, the evening, in the evening, that would be my evening walk, going to the supermarket. And I'd go to my local supermarket, I'd go into town, go to a few other supermarkets and just see if there's anything that's um, sort of reduced or that I can get hold of or something I like, that sort of thing. But <laughs> so I'd come back and I'd have a little bit of this and that and so on and so forth and have that. But living out here in Sierra Leone, no, I don't have a local supermarket that I can just walk into at six o'clock in the evening. Like my local supermarket in, in the UK closes about 10 o'clock. And the other two ones in town, there's a 24-hour one, a couple of 24-hour ones. Um, and I think that there's one that closes around nine o'clock, something like that. So if, you was, if I started off, at about what seven o'clock from my house especially now that it's the summer i could spend a couple of hours <laughs> walking across town i mean it's good because it gets my steps in i'd get my ten thousand steps in but i would spend a couple of hours walking across town buying this and that you know having a little look in there and seeing what's been reduced and what's been chucked out and all sorts of things so for me it's the right adventure <laughs> do you know what i mean but actually it's quite sad because when you think about it it's a typical sort of thing i guess that most middle-aged people would do in the uk and it was the one thing that i didn't want to get into do you know what i mean like just going from supermarket to supermarket being, I uh, well, it's idleness really, isn't it? <laughs> Buying things at 14 pence, 10 pence. But on the flip side of that, you'd get cheap food. And say, if I had a family of about four or five, and I know that prices have gone up, and, um, you know, everyone is complaining of the pinch at the moment, Everywhere you go in the world, everywhere you go. But I tell you, <laughs> in the UK, like you could just get food for next to nothing. 
you don't have to eat you don't have to buy your food at marks and spencers for example you don't have to go to expensive supermarkets you know you can buy in the market you can wait till the evening and the other thing as well there's so much food waste in the uk if you wait till the evening and the market if you live in a small town like i do or did <laughs> if you wait till the evening and the stall holders were closing down their stalls you could you could get a lot of discarded vegetables fruit and vegetables for literally next to nothing literally next to nothing 10 pence you could literally get lots of things for nothing do you know what I mean like it was it would be so little that you have to pay for it that um yeah you could go you could go with two or three pounds and you would just get a whole load of food um back for that so that's what i'm trying to where australian is different i mean in australian to be fair you could actually grow vegetables you could actually grow vegetables that would cost you nothing not even half a pence do you know what i mean like i'm thinking here in my garden here in australia which is which is this one <laughs> i hope you saw that in my garden here uh, we've got some vegetable leaves growing the bush is um, lemongrass which is good for tea um, if I wanted to grow more vegetables I could do so right to the back there's a banana tree there there's a pawpaw there I mean if I wanted to grow more um, fruit and vegetables here in Australia I could do so um, I'm more interested in beautiful flowers to be honest <laughs> as opposed to food so um so that would have given me a little bit more um sort of leeway to not to like buy some stuff go into town and buy some stuff and the other day actually here in australia we actually got um a sweet potato somebody had obviously dropped a sweet potato or whatever it was they dropped i don't know but the sweet potato had grown all of its own accord and nobody nobody sort of planted it if you like well i didn't so i don't know how it got there but there it was my first harvest it was a sweet potato so the point is you could grow your own things you don't need the super hyper uh, supermarkets to go in and spend money every evening buying things and if you were quite savvy um, you'd go into like the rural areas anyway and get uh, tons of fruit and veg you know obviously you have to think about things like storage how do you keep it and um, you know how do you process it a little bit and yeah you you would have to think about that you know because electricity is not like um, available all the time for most people you know <laughs> it's a bit of a sore topic i have to say the electricity one because it keeps the price of it keeps mounting and mounting and people are struggling trying to keep up with it apart from anything else they don't get electricity in this country 24 hours a day the only thing that can actually save a person if they want to have electricity 24 hours a day is solar got plenty of sunlight even in the rainy season there's bound to be an hour or two of sunlight to keep your um, panels going and give you electricity at least for you to see at night you won't be able to do fantastic things like i don't know what do people do with electricity anyway uh, i mean you know sort of try and keep your electricity usage low if you can so um yeah lots of ironing i suppose with the electric iron might be a problem if you had several um, uh, freezers or fridges if you had a microwave but i think that you can use all of those things one at a time 
you cannot use all your electrical appliances all together unless of course if you had enough panels on the roof then you could do that so there's always something to think about there's always something to think about but i think it's all a matter of being adaptable that's what i think i don't think that a person can like um, not overcome <laughs> these issues i don't think it's something that's insurmountable in terms of being able to deal with it i feel that i feel that you could i feel that anybody could um uh, and one thing about us humans is is our flexibility we we are flexible um beings if you like um and, and when you come to a low resource country for want of a better description just set your standards just put yourself like i expect nothing or set your standards low so that whatever happens you're not disappointed you know it does pay actually to have um, some funds so that you can have um, a little bit of a comfortable life you know one thing that you should try and do is if you can get your own accommodation because paying shed loads of money for renting homes and there are certain homes that you might not want to rent do you know what I mean so if you've got um, standards of where you want to live and um, and how you want to live you might not want to rent certain places <laughs> It's just the way it is. So I think that when you do move, if people are, who are in the diaspora who are thinking of moving to the continent, they might just want to consider having their own home first. And that's not a big thing. It can be done. It can actually be done. So there we are. I've chatted a little bit. Thank you for joining me today. Lovely to see you um yeah do please keep in touch leave a comment let me know what you think um i look forward to it actually cheers and god bless oh do please subscribe to my channel thank you very much i'm looking to build my numbers <laughs>